Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode. My name is Tony and this is Hug Pilot. In this episode, we're going to take a look specifically at the design of the airplane, why I put things where they are, or what was the reasoning behind the actual design as you see it here, as well as point out all the problem areas I had along the way. It looks great, it's a good job, I'm pleased with it. However, there are some problem spots, and problem spots related to possibly uh, because of the products that I used along the way, or related to the fact that I'd never done this before. So I'm hoping that this helps out a few of you out there if you're deciding to take on such a project. So let's get to it. Before we get to the whole design on the plane, let's start with the vinyl that I was using. This is 2080 3M vinyl. So in front of me here, we've got a 2080 and 1080 vinyl. The only difference is that it's got this little protective coating on it here that I'm showing you. I've got the GoPro set up here in front of me. I hope this is picking it up correctly. But uh, this is this kind of, I'll say saran wrapped because that's what it looks like to me, uh, coating over the vinyl. The idea behind it is that when you use these uh, squeegees, you can accidentally cause some um, some scratches in the vinyl. So the 2080 is meant to protect that. So that way you apply it, do everything you have to do to it. And then once you're ready to say, I'm done working with it, you just peel that saran wrap off. Whereas the 1080 doesn't have that protective coating. I'm guessing because a lot of people were scratching it with the squeegee. Although I was told by professional installers that um, the 1080, as well as 2080, because it's essentially the same product, um, it uh, have this self-healing capability. That is, if you apply heat to it, or I guess you're driving around in your car, or your plane parked out somewhere, that it would take care of itself when the sun beats on it or the heat applies. I don't know if that's fact or fiction because it's winter here. I've got heating in the hangar. Uh, some scratch marks, scratch marks, light scratch marks have appeared on some of the vinyl, only like I'm leaning against the plane, that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's healing itself because it's too damn cold it's winter here so we'll find out over time but either way the scratches on that you know doesn't look any different than say a scratch uh, on a on a car and again scratch is superficial it's it's done by this nice soft little uh, squeegee so uh, that is um, one of the things the uh, the differences between the two so one of the problems that I had with the 2080 because that's what I went with is that when I stretch the vinyl or reposition it, I guess one too many times or applied heat to it and then tried to reposition it, that protective coating would separate from the vinyl itself. That kind of became an inhibitor when you're trying to squeegee things off. So in some cases, I just removed the damn stuff and squeegeed it and everything was fine. In some cases, it also added to confusion. So when you're laying out the vinyl, this has got an air release in it. So you can squeegee in the bubble. It just squeegees the bubbles right out. It's got these air release channels in it. Both the Avery Denison and the 3M have the same technology. I don't know about any of the others because I didn't look into any other product. But that air release, sometimes, you know, you've stretched the vinyl a certain way and you've kind of locked yourself into a corner with the squeegee and it causes a crease in the vinyl. The protective coating on the vinyl sometimes would create a crease. And I believe it was the vinyl that got crease, which caused me to remove the vinyl and apply heat to take the wrinkle out of it. But in the end, it turned out that it was the protective coating that was creased and not uh, the vinyl itself. So it, 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 it created a bit of confusion as I was going through this project. It didn't happen on the large flat areas, but uh, wherever there were compound curves, it, it was a problem. So just be aware of that. Uh, it's, it's great because it protects it, but it's also a bit of a pain in the ass because it adds confusion, especially for an amateur who's never done this before. So let's look at the placement of the vinyl as well. So uh, GoPro is running now here. This pretty much comes off nice and easy. I want you to hear this. And that's, that was me unsticking uh, the vinyl off the plane. And uh, you know, you put it on and, 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 and do what it needs to be done, uh, you know, by applying the squeegee over it. And then just, you can pull it and reposition it. If, if you had to, 
if you had to you know do a bit of a turn i'd apply some heat here and just move it over to the right a little okay let's talk about the product and how sticky it is i don't know how many times you can apply and remove apply and remove apply and remove uh, but i did it a few times and from what i saw in a lot of the videos online uh, it doesn't seem to be a big deal till it eventually settles in over time uh, I did learn one thing that once you apply heat to it, it's a little more difficult to remove off the surface. Not like super difficult, but it, it sticks a little better once you've applied the heat. I guess it, it simulates the aging process over time that way. So uh, this is what it sounds like. And it makes you feel like you ripped a pair of pants, but uh, you can put it back on and off. And I guess, like I said, I've done it quite a few times. So the good thing about this vinyl is that it has stretchability. Uh, they say that you can't stretch the product more than 30%. Who's they? Uh, an actual installer who told me this. I don't recall reading it anywhere. I didn't even dig into it. In my mind, it was don't stretch this stuff too much. And I'll tell you why you don't want to stretch it too much. In this particular case, I have the orange that I used. It's burnt orange from 3M 2080, and I've got the black. I've tried stretching the black and it doesn't have the same issue as the orange and the issue is is discoloration so you kind of lose the coloring as you stretch it too far uh, it happened to the orange but the black I tried to stretch it as much as I did with the orange and I didn't have that issue so let's look at how far this stuff can stretch I don't want to go too crazy but to give you a sense of how much it does stretch I've put a piece of tape to show how far the vinyl goes more or less and I'm going to lift this I'm going to apply some heat to part of it and uh, I'm just going to soften up that section and then I'll just grab the tips and kind of give it a pull so what I'm doing now is I'm stretching it to a certain level and we can see I mean you know I've, I've extended it two inches and that's just from this area but it still looks orange and it looks the same tone as here however if I went around a compound curve this would kind of look like a, a much lighter shade of orange so that's the type of stretching we do it and that's how that's done the cool thing is is that you can actually lift this and I hope I'm getting this so everybody can get a sense of it there are tons of videos out there you see like right now it was a little more difficult to, to pull up so I can take this right now and I can add heat to it and it's actually shrinking back to the same size and you'll see I'm gonna put this down now it's still a little stretch but there you go it's it's pretty much the same length as it was before so it gets back its memory and it's pretty cool all right, so those of you who watch my videos all the time know that I'm not used to walking around and shooting that way. Normally, I like to have a nice, you know, fluid motion throughout my videos, but I think it's important that we walk around and kind of have a discussion as to what I'm doing here. So let's talk about the design itself. I put it up somewhere on this thing or probably just cut in. The original design was as I'm showing you now. It was supposed to be all one big piece, uh, everything nice over the top. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be uh, one piece right here, all laid out, uh, one big orange piece here, one big orange piece through the top, and one big orange piece on the back over here that you can see. The reason I didn't do it, I've mentioned it in the first video in the series, was because a professional told me, uh, you're nuts. It's not going to work. You're going to have issues. You're going to have to overlay the vinyl to avoid a whole bunch of problems with it. So that is why this plane today looks very different than the original design. Everything here has a reason and a purpose. I actually went with the flow. When I encountered an issue or thought, hey, this is going to be a problem, I made adjustments and that's why it looks the way it does. If you notice and take a close look around, and I'm also going to shoot a second B-roll with the uh, GoPro on this, but the reason that you're seeing the plane the way it is, is I made sure not a single piece of vinyl overlapped any other piece of vinyl. This would avoid the problem of what would I do 
uh, with that seam. How would it work side by side? I was worried about cutting it incorrectly. And so I laid it out exactly the way that it is. So let's start with the cowling. The big stripe over here was supposed to carry over all the way to the other side. And I scrapped a couple of pieces because this whole area down here was a bit of a problem. So I decided the easiest way to get around it was actually to cut off. So I had the least amount of compound curve to deal with. And that's all that. I scrapped two, this is the third piece on there. So I scrapped two other pieces on the plane before I got to this. This is also the very first piece that I applied. So I learned from there on and realized by the end of the project that I didn't have to scrap those pieces at all. It was just my lack of knowledge on applying this stuff that caused me to do so. The orange here is the same thing. It was supposed to come out all the way to this area here. And then uh, because it was a problem spot, I, I you know, pulled it away. Earlier in this video, we've also spoken about the orange and changing a bit uh, of the color. This area here was a bit of a pain. I stretched it a little too much and it's slightly faded. So when you see me at the air shows, you can come and have a look for yourself and see where it was a problem. You can see that downturn in the front of the plane. The reason behind that was primarily because a few years back, I damaged the cowl, I had to repaint it. I didn't have a paint booth or anything to do that with, so I made a makeshift thing in my garage. And so I painted it and the paint didn't turn out too hot. So I decided I was gonna cover it with vinyl. Uh, if you look really close, there is some area there that is still isn't painted well, but it was good enough. And that's the reason for that area there that I decided to you know, lower out the orange. It add, added to the look. I had always planned to do something like that, but the specific location of it was because of that. The double stripe on the side of the plane was done because I wanted a separation from the top part to the lower part. And it was quite simple. It was just a matter of like two pieces of tape was two inches and it worked out well. However, what I want you to realize is everything was done here so it'd be a little easier for me to work. And when I close the canopy, you're going to see something. And that something is that the black stripe and orange stripe that you see here is actually done on purpose. I didn't have to wrap anything around this bottom area. So when it would be closed, there would be no issues around the lock. Not that it was a big deal. The lock wasn't a big deal. But the idea was is that, you know, I would close it and, and the stripe would avoid as much as possible uh, any of that opening uh, canopy. So that's the reasoning behind that. Pretty smart, huh? Now, going along the same themes, the toughest part on the plane was uh, this over here, this section here around the window and all this other stuff. And we're gonna get to the problem areas. But because this was one long continuous piece and it would have to start over here and go all the way to the end over there, I thought, you know, this is gonna be a problem. And that's where this guy was born, right? I'm looking at the camera there, right there. That's where this guy was born. And the idea was basically just to break a line so that I'd have less problems. And that carried on over here into this section where I decided that, uh, yeah, it's still gonna be too much to go from here all the way up to the top. And I was being cheap and wanted to save uh, scrapping a lot of vinyl. I was still afraid at the beginning of this. So I liked this stripe quite a bit. I like that stripe quite a bit and I decided to put that whole area there and I said, oh, that half moon on the other side would be a neat idea. So it came out of necessity at first to make it easier on me. Now the artsy fartsy Tony in me decided to make it a little different than the rest. So you can see that, you know, there's two inches, one inches and all that stuff. But in this particular case, what I did was is I came down here and I put it pretty close. The other, uh, you know, pretty close where it was just the sizing of the vinyl. So if we look at sizing itself, what we're dealing with here is this is a half inch space here. This is three pieces of tape, which make the um, uh, large stripe. This was just, you know, go select something and make it pretty round circle -y thing. This is the, uh, di uh, the space 
this is the spacing as it relates to the uh, tape cutting, uh, the, the cutting tape, and everything else is always tape cutting, tape cutting, and then it's just one continuous motion. So that's the reasoning behind this. I wanted to wrap around the control surface, but it wasn't really necessary. So uh, the tail section here is the only place that I thought I've got so much experience doing this now, because I'm a professional now, that uh, I could wrap it around and give it a shot. And I had plenty of vinyl, so if I mess this up, I keep trying. And I actually messed uh, the orange up a couple of times um, while I was doing this work. So that's the reasoning behind all of this. And there you have it. On to the next section. Okay, so let's talk about the problem spots. Let's start at the front. First of all, if you have the opportunity to find someone to help you with this, go ahead and do it. Because if there's one thing I learned, this was cool, I did it all on my own, as I said in the other videos. Uh, a couple of people stopped by and helped with one or two pieces, smaller pieces, but it was went so much faster and it was so much easier to do when there was a, a, an extra set of hands involved. So if I could make the number one suggestion, it would be to go ahead and make sure you got a buddy to help you out. So the first thing that was a problem for me were all the compound curves, uh, especially around the front of the plane when I was starting off. So again, going back to why I designed things the way they were, it was the smallest amount of stripes uh, where it wouldn't be an issue around the compound curve. For the larger pieces, I had no choice. I had, it was gonna have a problem no matter what, so I went ahead and did it. But, but definitely the compound curves were an issue for a person like me, a beginner. So I would suggest to avoid as many of those compound curves as you can, if at all possible, for your first project. So where did I scrap the most amount of vinyl? Well, uh, that's easy. The biggest pieces on the plane. So it started off with the black stripe at the front. That was a problem, as I may have mentioned already. I scrapped a couple of pieces there, but I believe that was more because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, had I done those pieces at the end of the project, I think I would have been fine and uh, you know knocked off in one piece. The other place that was an issue was where the rear windows uh, were. Uh, I cut out large pieces, but because it's kind of an odd shape where it goes from a very thick area down to a thinner area at the back, it became a problem. And as you've already seen, I solved that issue by uh, adding that uh, half moon arc moving forward um, of that area. So we solved that problem there, but I scrapped a couple, I actually scrapped two pieces on that uh, aft area where the window is. Again, I had uh, scrapped both pieces on one side of the plane. So on the opposite side, I had no issues at all because uh, I had gained so much experience in doing it on the left side. So there was a lot of scrapping of material there and that's pretty much it. Everything else was fine. So overall, I scrapped about 25 square feet of orange and about 25 square feet of black. Now, uh, these are five feet wide, so I scrapped five feet in length of black and orange. So the number one thing that you're going to have to get over, and it was difficult for me to do, was that unless you've got an absolutely pristine paint job, this vinyl will not hide any flaws in your paint. So I mentioned in one of the other videos that I painted this airplane myself. It was the first one that I painted. I, I have built three different airplanes. But uh, this is the one that I painted myself. And because of that, I did it in an environment which I thought was pretty you know, clean, uh, did all the necessary precautions, but a lot of dust specks went into the paint. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, on this video right here, but you can see all those paint specks uh, that were on the paint. Now I could have fine sanded all the paint before I applied the vinyl. However, I didn't know how this was going to turn out and thought if this doesn't look good, I'm just going to remove all this vinyl. But if I remove all the vinyl and I've already sanded down the paint, I'd have the issue of having to repaint an entire airplane and I wasn't up for that at all. The other place where I had issues, but it was uh, self-inflicted, if you will, is around the areas where I've got screws. 
So uh, I put the screw back in, but instead of cutting out the vinyl from the hole, what I did was is I just put the screw in. I said, oh, I'll leave this extra vinyl in there, and the screw itself will push in the vinyl and ensure that it holds correctly. And what I did was I just basically slit a little cross and put the screw in and tighten it. And it was fine till the very end. And at the end, as I tightened that screw for that extra little oomph, uh, it got hold of the vinyl and then just twisted it. Now, one of two things I could have possibly done, and I'm not sure if either one would have worked, is uh, cut the vinyl, push it in, let it sit there for a week, and then put in the screw, and it wouldn't have done anything because the vinyl would have sat in there already correctly, or possibly lubricated the screw before I put it in. So that way there was a, just enough lubrication. It's just that last quarter turn is, is what I think uh, messed up the vinyl. It didn't do it in a lot of places, just in a couple of areas. It's not too bad, not too noticeable. I'm telling you about it so the day you see this plane, you're going to look for it. The windows were uh, a bit of a pain and more, I think, related to my OCD and not the actual process. I wasn't sure if I should go like right along the edge of the canopy window and the windows uh, on, on the aft windows. So. Uh, as I moved along the project, I would suggest to anyone that you kind of go onto the glass with it if you've got a home built, because if it's manufactured, it's more or less perfect, as they say. But uh, for myself, uh, I had a, a lot of conflict in my mind as to whether I should or shouldn't. So on one side of the plane, I started going like right along the edge, and you'll see some of the gray paint underneath and I decided not to redo it again. Although I've got a lot of vinyl and I may redo it in the future, in a few months, like after I've flown with it for quite a while, but that gray is exposed. So I would suggest it to anyone doing this that they go a bit onto the glass, but be aware, I do not know how well this stuff will keep sticking to the glass. I assume it'll be fine, but I really don't know. I didn't look into it. And the amount that I went over was maybe by an eighth of an inch, if even. Bubbles, air bubbles on this are a non-issue. Uh, what I did learn though, was that you can apply the vinyl, squeegee it up, and apply a bit of heat afterwards. If there's any air trapped in there, uh, it'll pop up and you'll see it. So then you can remove the vinyl immediately and just re-squeegee it out and make it all nice and pretty. Uh, there is some kind of air channels in this stuff that allows uh, the air to pass through. You got to put some pressure on that squeegee to get it done, but it does work. Now, do note that if you apply, if you're kind of stretching, applying heat, stretching some more, that's the way you're supposed to work with the product around these curves. However, what happens is that once you stretch the product and you're squeegeeing it, uh, you may end up causing a wrinkle. And because of that, what happened is I created one wrinkle over the top area. Unfortunately, what happened is uh, I didn't notice the wrinkle till the following day because that area I completed as nightfall was coming and you know i left so i actually left the wrinkle there as a reminder how bad a job i did one of the last places where i had an issue or am slightly concerned about possibly in the future lifting and it has not so far is the rudder area it's the only place on the plane where i stretched a lot to get around the tip section of the plane of the rudder and then pulled it towards the front so what you normally do is you put the uh, cutting tape on the plane and if you're going to do any stretching where you you know you, it's all going to be visible is you kind of pull way past that cutting tape and then what happens is uh, when you cut any wrinkles that come past the cutting tape you want it really quite far but because I committed to the amount of vinyl that I used, I, I wrapped it around that corner. It seemed okay, but I can kind of see the bit of the wrinkle on that piece of vinyl. I could remove it and reapply it again, but again, I want to wait and see, you know, two, three months down the line, how this stuff reacts, because I'd like to do this again on other airplanes. And, uh, you know, it's more of a, this is my testing bed. So I decided to keep that.
I hope what I presented to you today was informative. If you do have any questions, don't be shy. Post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'm also planning on flying to Sun and Fun this year, assuming the weather doesn't stop me from getting there. So if you see me out there, don't be shy. Come on over and say hi.